So let's look at interpretation of history, right? Revelation as interpreting history. That's the section that we find ourselves in. So notice the way Reformed apologists view science carries over into how they view history and the use of historical evidences in apologetics. And so in this particular section, our authors want to uh, look at the views of Kuiper, Clark, then Till, and then they'll also throw Bonson in here as well. Yeah, yeah. So, if, you know, if you can you can cut them up uh, how you want. Um, maybe Van Til is an offshoot of Clark, or uh, those two are two separate, and uh, Bonson comes under Van Til, or he's his own thing. Uh, you know, that, that, that's for a different podcast to discuss. So, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We're already doing a large book, so what, what, what more do you want from us? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> well, Kuiper. Kuiper has no real use for historical evidences. In his view, apologetic arguments in support of the Christian faith are constrained by the fact that in every single point of contention, the antithesis between the Christian and the non-Christian, were they buttheads, uh, and their view of knowledge and the world is ultimately at issue. The naturalist, therefore, cannot concede one miracle without forfeiting his position. And again, I'll just mention C.S. Lewis's uh, book, Miracles, really, really makes that point, almost to the point of him being uh, presuppositionalist. In fact, I would say that he's the least evidentialist uh, in, in that book, and it's uh, all for his betterment. <laughs> uh, he will answer the argument uh, from miracles by denying their very possibility, that is, the, the non-believer. He will answer the argument from prophecy by claiming that all apparent prophecies must have been written after the fact. Why? Because those things are not possible within his worldview. If they're not possible within his worldview, giving him uh, the uh, the movement of stars around or uh, his name being written on the moon or um, uh, the, the, um, the apple floating in midair. Uh, th those things have to be illusions. They have to be uh, drug use. They have to be um, uh, uh, Elon Musk uh, uh, messing around up there. Uh, <laughs> all, all those things are available to him as uh, defeaters to what is uh, seen before his eyes because those things like miracles and like prophecies uh, are just uh, lucky guesses or just uh, 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 movements of luck. Right, because they don't fit into his worldview, right? His 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 view of how things uh, operate, right? Mm -hmm. And so that's a, this that's what Kuiper here is trying to point out. And so as a result of that, he has no real use for historical evidence, it's because they can be dismissed by the unbeliever because they don't fit into their particular worldview, mm -hmm. right? Uh, okay, what about Clark? Well, Clark's, uh, you know, you'd think that his uh, thoroughgoing rejection of all empirical inductive arguments, right? He he wants to say only deductive arguments and the premises of the deductive arguments are based on scripture. That's where Clark is coming from, right? And so he rejects all empirical and inductive arguments as resting, uh, you know, on deductive fallacies. So one would assume then that he would reject all historical arguments, you know, supporting the Bible and Christian faith. <laughs> but actually, that would be our authors tell us something of an overstatement. Clark agreed that evidences had their place. He simply denied that they could serve as positive arguments for the truth of Christianity. Interesting. Interesting. So Clark only saw uh, limited negative purposes for such argumentation, that is, answering objections. For Clark, historical arguments cannot prove Christianity true. At best, it can answer arguments purporting to show that it is false. Well, right. you know, uh, the, 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 the resurrection is just uh, Jesus swooned, and he, he got up after three days, brushed himself off, and went, all right, I, you know, I, I was just really tired after uh, <laughs> being tortured and nailed to the cross and hanging up there for, uh, you know, a good number of hours. Uh, and and n now I can go out and knock on the door of my disciples' uh, uh, door and eat with them and uh, continue to teach with them, and th th that that that's it. Well, no, it, uh, Clark is going to reject that and say, actually, there's better evidence to show that the resurrection is possible, and that uh, well, uh, that the resurrection is more likely and defeats the swoon theory. I guess mm -hmm. is the the better way to say that right. as a as right. a. Uh, negating that type of, of, of uh, answer to, well, you know, why did the Christian church arise uh, so uh, so soon after the, 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 the death of Jesus? 
All right, what about Van Til's position? Well, our, our author suggests that he is a little bit more complex. He argues that God's revelation of himself, both in nature and in scripture, is objectively clear so that people are utterly without excuse for their failure to believe in God. And so this leads him to reject any kind of apologetics that stops short of that conclusion, right? Now, he does not deny that fallen human beings can reason or understand truth. Uh, what he does deny is that their reason and understanding can be intelligible apart from the creation of uh, human beings in God's image. And he, therefore, objects to an apologetic that seeks neutral ground between Christians and non-Christians. So this is his big problem, you know, with this historical approach, right? This idea of interpreting history. Uh, you have to interpret it from the Christian worldview and and therefore, if you don't, which the non-Christians uh, don't, right, you can't seek neutral ground, you know, for both sides to kind of agree this is what we both believe. He doesn't think that's possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, this is one of the questions that I believe I asked uh, uh, Jason Lyle in our interview is that, uh, you know, if if if, uh, if people can come to faith uh, using the non presuppositional method, uh, you know, why should we favor one or the other? And so uh, to, to tantalize you, I will uh, leave just a link uh, in our in our <laughs> um, section below. So we'll do that. <laughs> well, the basic difference between the approaches to historical evidences of presuppositionalists on one hand and classicalists and evidentialist apologists on the other hand is that the former reason transcendentally, that is the, the presuppositionalists, argue transcendentally about the facts while the later uh, reason inductively about them. So uh, the highly, uh, it's probable that, that Jesus arose. Well, uh, the, the fact that we're able to know things about history is uh, dependent on uh, God acting in history, transcendental versus uh, just inductive, rolling the dice. Consequently, presuppositionists claim that their apologetic arguments yields absolute certainty for their knowledge. Oh, how terrible. Absolute certainty. <laughs> you, you are 100 percent certain that you are correct and zero percent uh, that you could be wrong. Of, so their uh, absolute certainty of the historical facts of the Bible, whereas traditional apologetic arguments yield only probability. In fact, I would say probably even uh, reading modern day uh, evidentialists from uh, uh, different folks will, will uh, show this uh, uh, limitation to uh, probability and, and uh, jettisoning things like um, uh, areas of, of uh, kind of Christian belief uh, that uh, may be viewed as secondary or tertiary uh, in favor of kind of making the, the biggest impact uh, with with your apologetic of for using history. Right, right. All right. And so, yeah, again, certainty versus probability with historical claims. How, you know, how in the world can you do that? <laughs> Well, you know, uh, and that's, you know, kind of the next criticism here, the criticism that historical investigation by its very nature cannot rise above probability in its findings, right? To that particular criticism, Bonson now makes uh, a telling reply, our mm -hmm. book tells us, right? And so Bonson says this kind of criticism, right, against probabilistic arguments is often answered by saying that historical facts, especially miraculous ones, uh, just because they are such, that is miraculous, cannot be known with any more than a high degree of probability. But he says such an opinion is contrary to God's inspired word. Right? Peter proclaimed this historical event and miracle. You know, Peter said, let all the house of Israel, therefore, know with certainty that God has made him Lord by raising Jesus from the dead. He did not say, Bonson tells us, that it was highly probable that Jesus rose from the dead, but rather that it was not possible that death could hold him. Mm -hmm. All right? And this is found in Acts chapter 2 in Peter's uh, sermon uh, on the day of Pentecost. Right. Well, Bonson's defense of the precepts' rejection of probabilistic apologetic arguments makes it clear that his approach to historical evidences does not proceed inductively. That is, we do not know with certainty that God raised Jesus from the dead because we have studied the historical evidences inductively. We know it with certainty because if we were to deny it, we would implicitly be denying the Christian theistic revelation. 
apart from which we can have no coherent basis for knowing anything in history. To deny it uh, means to deny your initial starting point, which is that God is uh, real and we can know things through his revelation. Uh, we know those things and the characteristic and person of God uh, is, is known transcendentally. And so uh, we're, we're, we're back to, to being uh, worse than uh, what we even started with, uh, with having no basis, no consistent basis uh, for knowledge. And so now we're up in the air with everything. Right. And so we can have certain knowledge of history. Why? Well, because uh, revelation, that God's revelation has interpreted history for us. And so we can know because God tells us, right? That's that's the, the basic idea here. Mm-hmm.